Gary Zimmer is from uh, Madison, Wisconsin. He's a farmer, author, agribusinessman, and educator dedicated to biological agriculture. He's recognized around the world for his commitment to improving farming through uh, building so healthy soils. He has, been sp he has spoken to farmers and agribusiness professionals all across the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. He has never stopped learning or teaching throughout a lifetime in agriculture. He's raised on a Wisconsin dairy farm. Gary studied dairy nutrition, earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin, and a master's degree from the University of Hawaii, combined with years of hand, hands-on farming experience. Teaching agriculture in southern Minnesota, he continued learning, studying, and reading, always asking questions and looking at ways of farming with an open mind. He began asking questions about the soil and how it relates to healthy and productive plants, which led him to read the Albrecht papers. Uh, Gary trained and worked as a Brookside consultant for two years in southeastern Minnesota. For over 35 years, Gary has been evaluating farming practices as a consultant on his family's farm and as a president of the Midwestern BioAg, a biological farming consultant company located in Blue Mounds, Mounds Wisconsin. He operated the uh, BioAg Learning Center where biological farming practices and agricultural products are field tested and where the annual field day draws 800 to, to 1,000 agricultural professionals from across the country. The Zimmer family's organic farming operation, uh, their op operation near Spring Green, Wisconsin, utilizes the ideas Gary has gleaned over a lifetime spent studying agriculture. Otter Creek uh, Organic Farm is a 150 cow organic dairy also producing pasture-raised hogs, chickens, and beef cattle, vegetables, and farm crops on over uh, 1,000 acres. The farm operates on the principles of mineralized, balanced agriculture. Do everything you can to get the soils healthy and mineralized. Do everything you can to get the livestock healthy and comfortable. The family has honored, was honored in 2008 as the Moses Organic Farmer of the Year. The Zimmers have also opened local choice farm market selling locally produced organic and natural foods, including cheeses, beef, and chicken from the Otter Creek Organic Farms and Black Earth Meats. Heavily in demand as a speaker, Gary Zimmer appears at dozens of agribusiness organic and farmer meetings every year. He has spoken to diverse audiences, including the Acres USA Conference, Innovative Farmers of Ohio Conference, Heart of Maine Resource Conservation and Development, Upper Midwest, uh, organic Conference, Pennsylvania Sustainable Agricultural Conference, Vermont Grass Farmers Association Grazing Conference, Wisconsin, Wisconsin Grazing Conference, this Michigan Governor's Conference on Organic Ag, and has participated in farmer education programs in Australia, Holland, New Zealand, and South Africa, and has consulted on farms in these countries as well as Greece and China. Gary is the author of the book, The Biological Farmer, a complete guide to, sustain, to the sustainable and profitable biological system of farming published in 2000. And his second Oof. book is due out later this year. Um, his focus remains on the soil as the source of nutrients, how healthy soils produce healthy plants for healthy livestock and ultimately healthy humans. Let's please give Gary a warm welcome. Well, good. Pleasure to be here. My Can microphone is working. Looks like they're having some issues over there. It's probably my, my computer. My father is a practicing... So, all right. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess I better get started. My mind is off on something else. So, uh, has anybody ever heard me speak before besides Will? Oh, quite a few of you. <laughs> He's the heckler of the crowd. See, I just... Uh, actually, the National Organic Standards Program had their... Uh, a meeting in Madison, Wisconsin, and they had a public comment. And so I went in there in the public comment, and it was about animal welfare. And I got up there, and I had just been reading a book called Make It Stick. And so how do I get my message to stick? What message is going to stick? Now, the one that sticks with Will Winter is I fell off the stage once. <laughs> Two weeks after I had back surgery. And so then I'm in California, and I'm doing a conference, and it's a rainy day, we're doing a pasture walk, and I backed into the electric fence. Why would they have the electric fence on? And I'm standing in water. Now, those messages stuck. They have no idea what I said. But what stuck was that. I went to the National Organic Standards meeting. It was kind of fun because I said, 
what's going to stick? I said, you're sending regulators out of Washington, D.C., and this is agriculture, to my farm, and they, they said we're in violation of the grazing standard. Now, if you've ever been to my farm and your head is kind of screwed on straight and you look around, you see we are grazers. There's cattle everywhere out on the pasture. And the other the, thing you'll observe if you want to try to look for... <laughs> oh, I got help. <laughs> That'll stick. <laughs> Uh, so I said they had, uh, they're going to have now the organic inspectors are going to come to our farms and so I said that was my whole point with them. I said, uh, don't you dare send more people out of Washington, D.C. that can't recognize our farm by standing at the gate. So what I'm trying to say is this is all about a system. It's not about one little detail. To tell us that only 24% of the dry matter intake came from, from the pasture, I asked the inspector, I called back and I said, do you know what dry matter intake even is? Yep, it's 42 pounds. I said, for whom? You, you know, I said, it's kind of crazy. And they're supposed to score locomotion and cows. I had a lot of fun. I got all done. And I said, if you really want to be good at organic inspectors, if you really want to do it, I think you need to carbon print the ink to see how old it is. Most of us less than 24 hours old and all the paperwork number organic farmers. That's the day before the inspector comes. <laughs> and see, and so why well, make us more silly paperwork? So I'm, what I want to stick today is... Uh, ones that heard me speak before come back again because I go fairly fast and I throw a lot of things in there. Not fairly fast, we'll say really fast. And, uh, uh, and so I, I, I throw things in there and I, it's, it's, it's a lot of detail going to be given, but I don't want you to lose sight of the big picture. That's what I want to stick, that there's no magic silver bullet, there's no little magic little wand, there's no one little thing. It probably worked for somebody somewhere, but it's the system, it's like yourself. If you walk around all those booths, you might find something by your design or drive or desire that you take that might actually benefit you. But your body is still a system, it's what you breathe, it's what you eat, it's what you drink, it's all the rest of the things. You can't find one pill to fix you, can you? Are you sure? <laughs> if you can, then I want it. And so. That's the message I want to stick. So then if you get down and say, well, where do I start? And how do so all of a sudden then people get right down to the detail and then they don't know where to go or where to start because they lost the fact that it's, we got things to deal with and the larger thing. So I'm a dairy nutritionist, as he said, and I'll give you a little rundown with some pictures of our farm and I don't want to make this a large chemistry thing, but I want to show you the pieces that are necessary that are the farm's job to manage, to take care of, to look after, the responsibility of that. So then the dilemma always becomes is how do they get from where they are to where they're going. And uh, I see Tim Whiteman standing back there. Uh, at his booth over there, the family farm defender booth, is our newsletter, our latest newsletter. And he's got a bunch of copies there. Now they'll probably disappear in a hurry now that I bring this out. No, but it's really, really interesting because on the front cover, Dr. David Johnson's a plant breeder and he breeds alfalfa. And 10 years ago, he wanted us to sell their alfalfa seed. And I went to the research farm and I said, why would I sell your seed? It's grown on dead chemical soils. I don't farm that way. Why would I want your seed? What can you do that I would select seed from what you're doing? If you've got a bunch of dead soil here. Well, he never forgot it. We are now eight to ten years into this thing. And it's unbelievable what they do at this research farm. First of all, they've got varieties of alfalfa that make 11 tons in Wisconsin. The state average is three and a half. On the new seeding year, they used to get three tons, and they had to use herbicides, pesticides, and chemicals. This year, they averaged on all new varieties, over six tons. They doubled their yield without the herbicides, pesticides, and insecticides. They bring in varieties from Europe that are supposed to have no disease resistance in Wisconsin. And they don't get diseased on this research farm anymore. They're not resistant to phytophthora. They're not resistant to any of that stuff. So I'm actually going to Ethiopia tomorrow. Do I need to take my malaria stuff? <laughs> no. I guess I got to die of something, don't I? You know, I had a friend die, though. <laughs> Malaria, see? You got to know how this goes. Fear is what we do things about. So I have an immune system, and I have a body, no, and, and that's why that, that all kind of fits into the same way. So anyway, um, that was the first book, and that's our farm, and that little fancy cow up there is not A1 or A2. It's a fancy registered Class 93 excellent Holstein cow that we breed on our farm. She is a, an embryo. She's a flush. She's one of three, and none of them survive beyond seven years, and our average cows are nine to ten years old, and we're confused. Is there some connection to that? Anyway, that was a beautiful, excellent cow that we breed on our farm. We're Holstein people until just recently we started crossbreeding because, I don't know, we're just late adapters. <laughs> so, our Midwestern Bioag is my company. I got in this uh, 
25 years ago, and at that point in time, you couldn't get the materials, and there's, uh, I, I couldn't get the fertilizers I wanted, and I was trying to do consulting, and that's why I quit consulting. I got into products, and we started looking at